So if we just go on begging for mercy, stay on the path, stay at the lotus feet of Guru Manjari, then we will be successful. That's for sure. Not because we are so great, no. <laughs> because the mercy is so great. Radharani's love is so great. Guru Manjari's love for us is there. That's why. And then the miseries of the blazing fire of material existence will stop. And this is the truth. I can see that slowly, slowly things where I actually always had some problem with, they stopped. I don't know, they just stopped out of mercy. Not because I was endeavoring, I was just praying because I was helpless. And like Gurudev is always saying, this is actually the best position always to be helpless and pray for the mercy of Radharani, for the mercy of Guru Manjari. And I like these examples of other devotees to hear how they are successful because this is giving us hope. This is giving us some energy to go on. Because this path, it not, it's not so... It's not so, uh, how you say, cross. Some things you are actually advancing in, you cannot see them, but feel. So sometimes we need to be strengthened on this way, to be more conscious on which way we are. So thank you very much. You inspired me both so much. We are going this path together and we are helping each other so much. I know that I sometimes think what I'm what I'm from help. They can live without me even better. But we are all needed actually. Because we are all aspects from our Swamini. We are all specialists of love. And the more the heart is cleaned, the more our speciality is coming out. And I love to see this in you, in all of you, because this also gives hope. So in this way, if we chant conscious with the right move, which will be mentioned later on in this Shikshashtakam, then we can see the waxing moon rising and it will spread like a white lotus of good fortune, also in our heart. But he is said for all living entities. That's mercy for all living entities. So we know if we go in the forest and we chant loud, even plants, 
even plants in the forest, some tree, some bushes, they will have some very nice effect of hearing this or feeling this vibration. So it's the good fortune and it's a white lotus. White is the color of always successful, like Jai Shri Radha. Jai Shri means she will always win and her color is then white. This is the color of the heroine. When I was reading this, I think it was in Vilap Kusumanjali. When I was reading this, I was very happy. The white color is showing that Radharani conquered Krishna. So, of course, white means also an, uh, a lot of other things, but actually for me, this is the main point. She will always succeed. And she will also succeed for us, actually, and this is the point. We will be successful because of the mercy of our Swamini, of our Radha. It's for sure. No doubt, no question. So, if we go on, on this path, we will reach the life and the soul of all education, actually, because if the holy name is actually vibrating in our heart purely, then we got the life and soul of all education. It's written here, chanting of the holy name of Krishna, expands the blissful ocean of transcendental life. And it gives a cooling effect to everyone and enables one to taste full nectar at every step. And enab it enables us to taste the full nectar at every step. So how you can have the full nectar in every or at every step? just by the mercy of Radharani, who has the full taste of the holy name of Krishna, only Radha. And that means who is chanting the name of Krishna will get close to Radha and will get the mercy of Radha. So text 13, Sankirtana na haite papa samsara nashana, chitta shuti sarva bhakti sadhana utgama. By performing congregational chanting of the Hare Krishna mantra, one can destroy the sinful condition of material existence, purify the unclean heart and awaken all varieties of devotional service. So through the process of congregational chanting, we will clean the heart and then awaken all varieties of devotional service. Now it depends on our taste, what kind 
what variety of devotional service do actually do we really want what kind of bhava we want to dive in but actually it's giving the entrance the holy name is giving the entrance because radharani and krishna are in the name and they are giving us all possibilities to serve them in love that's the mercy text 14 krishna premod gama prem amrita aswadana krishna prapti sem amrita sumutre majana the result of chanting is that one awakens in his uh, his love for krishna and tastes transcendental bliss ultimately one attains the association of Krishna and engages in his devotional service as if immersing himself in a great ocean of love. So again and again I try to remember myself this actually this is spoken by Radha and she is praising Krishna's name, Krishna's love. But we may add what we know about her. And then some of these verses get even much more sweet. Text 15 Uttila vishada daine pade apana shloka yahara arta shuni saba yaha dukka shoka. Lamentation and humility evoke within Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And he began reciting another of his own verses. By hearing the meaning of that verse, one can forget all unhappiness and lamentation. So now text 16, the second verse. My Lord, O Supreme Personality of Godhead, in your holy name there's all good fortune for the living entity and therefore you have many names such as Krishna and Govinda by which you expand yourself. You have invested all your potencies in those names and there are no hard and fast rules for remembering them. My dear Lord, although you bestow such mercy upon the fallen conditioned souls, by liberally teaching your holy names, I am so unfortunate that I commit offenses by chanting the holy name and therefore I do not achieve attachment for chanting. Mm. 
It's amazing that Radharani is describing the mercy of Krishna's name or names and forms. But actually, she is Sarva Lakshmi. She is the source of his good qualities. So, and I see that actually the mercy of the Lord and the mercy of Radharani is so great that they are unlimited names, unlimited names. Like Gurudev says, if you love someone, you can give a name out of love. Hmm? When I call Mama, Mommy, or Tutti Tutti, or whatever, it's out of love, she will accept. So, so many names are there and Krishna accepts because he wants to accept the love of his devotees. So, that's great mercy. In this way, he expands unlimited, actually. So many jivas, so many names, no end. And that shows that for every one of us, there's a place. A place for loving exchange. And there are also interesting names for Radharani to exchange with him. Very special names. So from down to up. So much mercy and so much variety. And there are no hard or fast rules for remembering them. So because we tend to be in Aishwarya and we tend to be in Vaidhi Bhakti with rules and regulations, actually here it's written, it is said by Ratha herself in the form of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. There are no hard and fast rules for remembering them. It's all about love and not rules and regulations. After all, Krishna can only be moved by the love. By Prema. So if we want to move him, we have to go to Radharani. Because only her love is great enough to completely capture him. And whatever we want from that, we can get only by her mercy, only in the right attitude. So please, if you want to share something in that, or maybe Gurudev, you want to give us your mercy.
You are giving already your mercy, I know. You let us speak. Can I say a little bit, Gorabaniji? Please. <coughs> so you mentioned very beautiful things because love has no rule and regulation. But uh, if we got, if we think got, some rule and regulation. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is rather himself. And then he show us how to practice, how to behave, how to express his feeling. Sometimes for, for me, we are so much conditioned because we are, uh, go through by the bhakti. Now I feel we, we kind of forced to do something or we have to do we should do the unknowingly, knowingly. We are, we are doing something. Even Seba also. But this Mahaprabhu teaching, this Raga Bhakti is really amazing. Because Raga is very spontaneous. Because come from heart, from love. And this mentioned, you have invested all your potency in those names. Sometimes it is say Nam and Nami is non different. That's true. If we chant Nam and Nami appear, means if we chant Nama and that personality will appear. Like I mentioned that the devotee is Moni Baba. But also, Shastra said, <laughs> Nam is more merciful than Nami. Like a personality, say so if we chant Krishna, Krishna's name is more than more merciful than Krishna. Because if we commit offense to Krishna, if we chant continuously, then offense is Nama Pav's mercy, then offense is disappear. And if we chant Radha's name, And then Krishna become mad. J just chant Ra. Krishna was so much amazing. Oh, who is chanting? And then Da. And then Krishna run after from that person who chant Radha's name. And Gora is even more merciful. <laughs> because Kali Yuga Avatara. And also, Lada and Govinda is mixing. So this is, this completely Mahaprabhu is, I, I feel describing Raga Bhakti. Spontaneous. So, do, no rule and regulation. 
I'm just, we need some feeling, some love. Yesterday, Gurudev was describing Gayatri Mantra. Every time Gurudev's explanation fall out, every day some feeling is coming out. So, this Hare Krishna Mantra, it is called the Yugana Mantra. And all, Yugana means Radha and Krishna's uh, like a meeting together. Gurudev say embracing. But also, same time, Radha Moha inviting us, hey Manjari, why don't you come with us? So, inviting us. Also, Mahamantra represents Radha Rani. Because Radha's feeling, always looking for a Mohan, a kind of Vipranama's feeling. Goswami also chanting in that mood. So Gorabaniji Gora explaining this, this, this bus also exp is kind of represent kind of Raga Bhakti. This no, no rule and regulation is amazing actually. Because Kali Yuga, we are so full. Or even, even it is say uh, everybody is, is Shudra. <laughs> Karo Shudra Sambhava. So this mantra give us supreme benefit. Sorry, I explained it. I say too much. Radhe Radhe. Radhe Radhe, you made a very nice point because actually what kind of mercy we got in the name, it's, it's so amazing if we go inside that. Because when Radharani is sitting on the lap of Krishna, completely lost herself, completely in Madan Mahabhav, Brimva Chitra, in this moment Krishna wants to go. In this moment he is making this conscious step with this bath with the experience of that bath he wants to come here and he is coming here and it means he, he, he is not just giving us some kind of love even if you say transcendental love even, even some kind of transcendental love is already so much mercy that we couldn't describe it but actually he is giving us the most highest taste available in their loving exchange. They lose themselves completely. And in this moment, this bath, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is distributing free. What we get is the highest possible exchange of love for free without rules in Kali Yuga. So actually that means the highest Chaitanya, the highest consciousness of love is actually that you lose yourself in love completely. You lose all of your 
consciousness of outer consciousness completely dive in love. And this is actually also what we want. <laughs> we want to lose our outer consciousness and just swim or dive in the ocean of this bhava, of Radharani's Madanakya Mahabhav, the best to be there and to serve that love. And this is the gift. So this is the holy name. But if we get it, that's the problem. That's why Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is saying, My dear Lord, although you bestow such mercy upon the fallen conditioned souls, I am so unfortunate that I commit offenses while chanting the holy name. And therefore, I do not achieve attachment or chanting. So this is our position. But by constantly praying again and again, let me feel this love deeper and deeper and again, again, again pray, like Srila Raghunadas Goswami is falling on the bank of Radhakund. As soon as he is in his Sadaka wish, immediately he is praying. He's not waiting. Oh, let's see what Sadaka has for me. <laughs> not one moment. Immediately he's praying for more mercy, more mercy, more mercy. And this is actually my problem. I think, yes, Sadaka. Huh? We can enjoy somehow or other. Huh? We will find a way. And then when suffering starts, then I come back and say, oh, okay, I forget. Sorry. Again, please, please, let me go on. So the point we could reach by the mercy is that we immediately pray for more mercy as soon as we are in Sadaka. As soon the consciousness is coming back in Sadaka, immediately pray. But this is the way. We go on, we go on, we pray again and again. We beg for mercy again and again. We have no qualification again and again. We just stay there with empty hand, please. We see that Panchatattva, even they are standing like this. Pray to Radha. Advaita Acharya and Sri Vastaku. So we may follow. And I have this feeling if we understand Shikshashtakam, we can only understand by the heart, not here. This is limited, so much limited. We can only understand in the heart. We have to dive in deep. What is Shikshashtakam? It's a praise of the love of the, the whole loving exchange, which is actually hidden there inside. It's also in a description of the holy name. Very deep description. 
What is the meaning of the holy name and the chanting? And this is the mercy of Radharani given by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Text 17 Aneka lukkara vanja aneka prakhara Kripate karila aneka namera prachara because people vary in their desires, you have distributed the various holy names by your mercy. Regardless of time or place, one who chants the holy name, even while eating or sleeping, attains all perfection. Regardless of time or place, one who chants the holy name, even while eating or sleeping, attains all perfection. So even we may start with Namabash. <coughs> If we go on, we will reach the goal. Sarva Shakti Name Dila Koriya Vibhaga Amara Dudhaivya Name Nahi Anuraga. You have invested your full potencies in each individual holy name. But I am so unfortunate that I have no attachment for chanting your holy names. You have invested your full potencies in each individual holy name. Although I don't like so much to see Rata as a potency, but in this case, I want to remember that actually she is one. And she is inside of all the holy names, because Krishna will not come alone, also not in his names. He always wants to be with Radha. So wherever there is a name of Krishna, there must be Radha also. But I am so unfortunate that I have no attachment for chanting your holy names. <coughs> and this means our good fortune will come when we have attachment to these holy names. Ye rupe la ile nama brema upajaya tahara lakshana shuno swarup rama raya Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu continued, O Swarup Damoda Goswami and Ramananda Roy, hear from me the symptoms of how one should chant the Hare Krishna Mahamantra to awaken very easily one's dormant love for Krishna. Now comes the well-known verse So hear from me the symptoms of how one should chant the Hare Krishna Mahamantra to awaken very easily one's dormant love for Krishna. 
So the law for Krishna is already there. It has to be awoken by chanting the Mahamantra. And this can be easily done if we follow the recipe Trinat api sunichana tarva iva sahishnuna amanina manadena kirtaniya sada hari. One who thinks himself lower than the grass, who is more tolerant than a tree, and one who does not expect personal honor, but is always prepared to give all respects to others, can very easily always chant the holy name of the Lord. So I would really like to hear from all of you how you understand this well-known verse by your words, very practical. If you do not feel inspiration right now, so maybe I will start a little bit and then... Yes, Jayananda? I think maybe, I don't know, if I only talk is not so very good, but that's what I want to share. So we are reading Anandas Babaji Maharaj's Radharasa Sdanidi and Birapak Sumanchari. Then we find out Anandadas Baba was saying, love, prema, and humility in this verse mentioned is the same, almost same. We are surprised, and I'm surprising. Whenever love is there, whenever prema is there, is humbleness is there. Whenever humbleness is there, there is love, there is prema. This Anandadas Babaji Maharaj mentioned. Also, today, this morning, we are reading Radhara Sasdanidi, maybe 80, 80 or 81. And then we share. Anandas Baba has a book about Shiksha Shtaka. Then I was, one point I was sharing. And uh, so here Shiksha Shtaka mentions, always prepare to give all respect to others. Who does not expect personal honor, honor but is always prepared to give all respect to the others. So he mentioned in this, in this, uh, to not be bus explanations. So everybody knows, many people devotee knows, apiches duracharo. Means, uh, if some devotee is, is completely dedicated to the devotional service, he may does um, uh, abominable act, but still that devotee is considered to be a sadhu. In this verse, Anandas Baba explain, we may think someone who is behave nicely or uh, very humble, that, that devotee is only sadhu. But uh, Anandas Baba said, no. Some, some of who worship Supreme Lord, some of who is 
w o r s h i p i n g Radha Moha. That person may behave, may be ill behaved, or may be not humble, or may be abominable act there. But still, he is considered sad. Another's Baba saying. So we are, sometimes, you know, we are thinking and also we have tendency to judge. I'm senior. I'm more higher than this devotee. And we try to judge others. But the Guru Dev's teaching, we should not judge others. We try to judge, we try to see ourselves. Because, and uh, Guru Dev's explanation, Gayatri Mantra, Vishwan Bharaya Dimahi. Guru Dev's explanation is every living entity, every creation of the Lord, Radha is there, love is there. If someone who can see this reality, he can or she can Respect and pay obeisance to all living entity, all creation of the Lord. So this is Guru Dev's vision. Guru Dev's vision is all living entity, all creation of the Lord, even tree or insects and animals. Guru Dev see in the love, Radha is there, or actually Radha Shakti is there, because love is Radha Shakti. So we are hearing Guru Dev's words, oh my God. And also Anantas Baba mentioned, humility and prema is nearly equal. Wow. We, and then in this, in this, uh, uh, vision, Anand Baba's vision and Guru Dev's vision, if we, we see in this bus, then at least I can, uh, feel more taste. Rade, rade. Thank you very much. Actually, this is the point. Love is everywhere. Even if we see outside of living entities, if we see the material uh, realm here, everything is made out of love, actually. If we look, if we are conscious, if we start with this consciousness, it's also a good start. Everything is made with love. Everything here, it's made in details. Everything, every theme here is like a science. If you want to understand plants, you will find a science. You will find that plants actually are giving through a system under the crown, they are giving each other, they are sharing actually, uh, how you say, uh, sugar. It's like what they eat, something like sugar, liquid. So you can even find there a loving exchange in the forest everywhere. So if you look deep, even here, moving or non-moving things, you will find they are made with love. And this is 
Radha Shakti. This is the Shakti of Radharani because love is coming from her. Whatever kind of love you find, it's from her. So it's a wonderful start. And actually, if you see this love in the nature, I don't know how you feel, but I feel humbled. If I see so much love everywhere in the nature, I already feel a little bit like humbled. And actually, this is just one little point we can see that humbleness is going with love. If you see love, if you feel love, you will get humble because you don't want to destroy the connection, your connection with the love. It's just fresh. If you start some connection, loving connection, you don't want to spoil it. Automatically, you act in a humble way, isn't it? Because you want to get more of this love. So like you nicely explained, Jainana Maharaj, there is this going together from humbleness and love. But humbleness for me also means that I see my position. Everything is made out of love. And if I don't have this respect for this, that everything is made in love, I cannot have love for myself. Because I'm respectless, I don't love myself. I will be not happy. So here is actually unhappiness is starting. We cannot see the love which is everywhere, every spot, even in the material world. What to speak of the <laughs> transcendental world? Even here. But if we remember that the material world is just in the spiritual realm, but is bedecked with clouds, the clouds of false ego, then we can understand that actually our problem is, why we are here, that we do not see that love. If we could see the love, we would be humbled and we would be eager to exchange more of this love and then everything would be good because we would have the wish to get rid of this stage of mind which is not humble, which is not actually bowing down to the love. Again, everything starts with consciousness. If we are conscious of love, even in the material world, we will be on the best way in the direction to love. So if we see our real position, that we actually are already swimming in love, then we can have this attitude where we are now, not in the best position, we don't have all the love because we don't see it and we don't embrace it and we don't want to go with it, with this energy. And then we can start to go in this direction and more and more will come. So it starts with seeing our real position, where we are now. What kind of consciousness do we have now? And we don't have to say again, if this is good or bad, doesn't matter. It is like it is. And our Radharani and our Guru Manjari will pick us up there where we are. But if we think that we are somewhere else, how they can pick us up? 
That's the problem. And this is the so-called false ego, a false vision of where we are. So if we understand where we are, we can pray for help and love will help us, that's for sure. Actually, it's an easy process given by Radharani, very easy. So for me, it's like, if I think myself lower than grass, that means grass which is lying on the street, the wind will come and blow it from here to there, the grass will not protest. If you step on it, it will not protest. You can do with this grass whatever you like, it will not protest. It's just grass. If the wind of love of Radharani is moving us as grass, and we will not protest, just going with this wind, then this is a good base. And if we are tolerant, like a tree, and this will be further described actually in later in this uh, verses, because a tree will not protest if you cut it, if you cut some part of it, it will give you shade. It will not protest if it doesn't get any water. It will not ask anyone for water. It is just in the hand of the nature. And again, for me, nature is one aspect of Radharani's love. Like a playing room is one aspect of the love of the parents. So, if we don't do something against this energy of love who wants to show us the way, who just wants us to play in love and learn in love, if we do not do anything against that and don't want to be praised that we are in this situation, but praise others who wants to have respect. Well, if they want, why don't you give them? Gurudev always say like this, I, in the beginning I was a little bit shocked to hear this the first time, but he says, well, if somebody wants to have praised his false ego, why you don't do? Why you don't praise him if he wants to have? He will get more faster over that, actually. Because he will more fast see that actually this is not giving him any taste. Why not give people what they are asking for? Because if you give them something else, the hand will be closed. But if you give them what they want in the right consciousness, your consciousness will be in that what you give. Like Gurudev is always giving us the mercy. Sometimes he is giving it in a sweet way, maybe sometimes not so sweet way. But mercy is inside. And love also has different kind of aspects. The fatherly aspect wants you to do something and then you will get something and the motherly aspect is always just opening the arms, whatever you have done, come here, I love you. Both aspects are needed. So if we accept, accept both of these aspects actually and respect others but don't want to have personal honor for us, then very easily we can chant the holy name.
So flow with the love. Don't protest against it. Against it. Be tolerant. Also means be patient. Patient. Most of the time we are not so patient. We want to have it now, not later. And we want to have honor and not give to others. So if we are taking care of these points, then easily we can dive into the Holy Name. And who is diving in the Holy Name, he will chant always the Holy Name. So if someone is inspired to add something or share on this point again, please do it. One question is coming. Yes, come. So the, uh, at this class, you said, uh, I don't like um, looking Radharani as uh, energy. Why? This is because, my question. Yes. And uh, it's also a simple answer. Simple question, simple answer, but a very good question, actually. Simple, but very good and very uh, interesting. Because if I say to some person you love, just that he's just an energy, will you like that? He's a person. You love this person. You don't want to call this person an energy. Yes, this person also has energies. But it's a person. It's my beloved. So how can I call her energy? But also it's a fact from the tattva side that she is the love energy of Krishna. And tattva means knowledge. And there we can understand that knowledge has nothing to do with love. It's just knowledge. You don't have to love a person just because you know something about a person. But if you love a person, you may not like it that others say she is just an energy. Thank you. Um, yeah, thank you. Thank you. She is clear now. Radhe. Thank you very much for this question. Oh, good day. Oh, brother. I come in Panchatatwa. Jaya, that is Radha Sakti. And it comes in Panchatatwa. To get the divine eyes, you need to feel the energy of Radhika everywhere. In the plant, in animal, in tree, in all the creation. It's a divine faith to connect yourself. You cannot say the tattva. Energy is not a tattva. Is not a philosophy. Your eye has to see divine. It's not a tattva. It's a reality. Because Radha Shakti is Gajada. And there is no difference between the Gayatri mantra of Gajada 
राधा रूपा है धीम है इज राधा एनर्जी इज राधा तो सॉरी आपको से बिकॉज यू थिंक डिफरेंट No, I don't think that she's Shakti. I think she's a person. That's the point, actually. A person is what is that? You have to see in this view. Is a Radha there? Radha Shakti is Gajadhar, and Gajadhar is Radha. Try to understand. So not confused with without understanding. <laughs> So thank you for your uh, words, Gurudev, and uh, we will go on with verse number twenty-two. Now Gauravan is Arati. Aha. Okay, we are already gone. We are. We are. Yes. I feel that this point really has to understand properly. We really have to uh, understand the teachings of Gurudev and the Shastras at this point. Otherwise, we uh, will end on a non-dualistic system and uh, that uh, will create many misunderstandings like all is one like this what also Prabhupada said now this uh, Mayavadic philosophy and this we have really proper to understand to go deep in this like Gauravani also tried to uh, explain in this this is a uh, Especially if you come from a Buddhist background, it's not easy to understand. I I understand also this that this question will uh, many times come. Uh, there's uh, a very deep meaning behind this, and it takes time to understand it properly. Thank you, Guruvani. Thank you. And thank you all for sharing and be here and share your time and see you next time.